Hey everyone, welcome to Iceland. Uh, I'm here with the BBC Earth Lab team uh, and our sister channel, BBC Earth Unplugged. Maddie's Hello. here, Hi, um, making a bunch of films. We, we really, 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 when we came out on this trip, wanted to see the Northern Lights, the Aurora Borealis. And, and look, <laughs> I mean... I, I cannot even begin to tell you how spectacular th this is. Over on Earth Unplugged, we're making a film all about the mythology behind the Northern Lights. It's really hard to speak because <laughs> genuinely we've just ran out of the car and this is just blowing both of our brains. Um, yeah. I'm going to tell you all about the science of this and also um, something I've discovered recently, which is a potentially deadly side to kind of all this as well. I'm going to leave you to it. Yeah, please. <laughs> and let's just, let's just enjoy this for a second. This absolutely immense light show is breathtakingly beautiful, but before we talk about its dangerous side, we need to explain how the aurora are created. And it's all thanks to the interaction of two things that we wouldn't normally see, the solar wind and the magnetosphere. And the story begins at the sun. Around the surface of the sun lies the corona, an aura of plasma that extends millions of kilometers into space and reaches temperatures of more than a million degrees Celsius. And then at that heat, the contents of the corona are extremely energetic, and even the sun's huge gravitational pull can't hang on to all of it, meaning particles and plasma are constantly escaping out into space in all directions. And this is what we know as the solar wind. And those particles and plasma are moving fast around 500 kilometers per second. So they take just three and a half days to travel the 150 million kilometers from the sun to the earth. And for comparison, if we were to drive that distance at motorway speeds, it would take you 153 years. So yeah, pretty fast. Once the solar wind reaches the earth, it encounters our planet's magnetosphere. Now that is the earth's magnetic field, generated deep in the swirling liquid iron of the outer core, and it extends out many tens of thousands of kilometers above the earth's surface. It's this magnetic field that makes our compass needles point north, where we can conveniently see the amazing aurora, but it also serves a much more important purpose, protecting the planet from that rushing, scalding solar wind by directing the charged particles down the magnetic field lines towards the poles. And it's when they reach the atmosphere that things get really exciting. Oh, it's actually calmed down for a bit. The solar particles collide with the molecules of gas in our atmosphere, transferring a lot of energy that's enough to excite the electrons in the oxygen and nitrogen in the air. As those electrons calm down, as it were, they release that energy as photons of light that we see in the aurora. And the different colours in the northern lights come from solar material interacting with different atoms in the atmosphere. We've seen a lot of green tonight. Green comes from oxygen, blue and purple from nitrogen, and red from a combination of both. But these beautiful curtains of light may one day be the hallmark of a deadly danger. On an 11 year cycle, the sun is periodically more active with more sunspots appearing on the surface and a greater possibility of coronal mass ejections. These are basically huge plumes of solar gas exploding out from the sun's surface, accelerating a billion tons of matter up to several million miles an hour. If the normal solar wind is like a gentle breeze, then a big coronal mass ejection is like a hurricane force gale that just comes firing down unhindered to the Earth's surface. And in the face of such an onslaught, the magnetosphere meets its match. The resulting geomagnetic storm would see immense and glorious auroras stretching as far as the tropics. But that's just a small silver lining compared to the accompanying, potentially catastrophic risk. The intense radiation from the sun poses the most threat to astronauts, spacecraft and satellites that aren't protected by the Earth's atmosphere, where it can fry electronics and damage DNA. And down on Earth, these charged solar particles can cause havoc to the electrical grid, creating high voltage power surges that can blow out transformers, they can create large scale blackouts and risks of fire as components short circuit. 
The largest coronal mass ejection in recorded history was in 1859, when we had far less reliance on electronics and space-borne systems. Apparently, northern lights were seen as far south as Cuba and Honolulu, and telegraph operators experienced sparks coming from their equipment. But if we were subjected to a geomagnetic storm of that scale today, our high-tech infrastructure would grind to a halt. No mobile phones, no GPS, no radio, TV, maybe no electricity at all. With these pillars of modern society torn down, who knows what chaos might happen as we struggle to adapt to the digital blackout. And it's not just us technological humans that would suffer the effects either. Several animal species like pigeons and turtles and whales can sense the Earth's magnetic field and they rely on it to navigate, sensing north just like we can sense the direction of a sound. But when a coronal mass ejection batters the magnetosphere, it sends those field lines all awry, leaving those animals lost and confused. Scientists have linked high instances of whale beachings to periods of high solar activity, which produce geomagnetic storms and make these migrating giants lose their sense of direction. Seeing the Northern Lights tonight was just once in a lifetime, absolutely beautiful. Uh, I feel so, so, so lucky to have seen this cosmic phenomenon with my own eyes. But with an insight into the processes that cause them, I'm certainly going to be thinking of them as a silent and eerie warning of how fragile our existence is and how much really we owe to our magnetosphere. So thank you, swirling molten iron core below. And if you like the idea of witnessing one of the world's most amazing celestial phenomena, then listen up. We are launching the BBC Earth Presenter Search 2018, an amazing opportunity for a brand new presenter to join the BBC Earth family. If you're passionate about science and you want to find a way to share that passion with people all over the world, then watch this video to find out more. Check out more of our videos from Incredible Iceland here and of course, make sure you subscribe to BBC Earth Lab. Oh, and hit that notification bell uh, because then you'll be one of the first to hear about one of our new videos. And don't forget that Maddie's got all your myths and legends all about the Northern Lights over on BBC Earth Unplugged.